Hello and welcome back to Beards, Bourbon, and Games. I'm your co-host, Conqueror Corey, and with me I have Mike. Hello. And you know what I like, Mike? What? Emulators. You like emulators? I love emulators. So, we found a really cool emulator that we wanted to show up today. Um, it's called Duck Station. And you've probably never <laughs> heard of it, because everybody uses EPSXE, uh, which is what I used uh, for all this time. Well, I heard about this emulator, and one of the cool things about it is it's self-contained, and it has a very easy internal scaler built into it, where you can enhance the graphics of your PlayStation 1 games. So we're going to show off some comparisons here to kind of show you. So right now, what they call X1 native resolution. So that's the native resolution of the original PlayStation. And if you're not familiar with this game, uh, it is Twisted Metal. Um, so many of you probably know this is, I think it was one of the launch titles of the original PlayStation, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, It's one of the so few we, games that came in a long box. Yeah, so one of the coveted long box games. Um, so we're going through here, I'm just showing off each car, because one thing I found is when, when I did this video and this comparison, uh, I found that the, a lot of times I would put it on nostalgia goggles, and even with the upscale resolution, I always thought the graphics looked that way. And so this is the best way to kind of show you comparison. So we're going to cycle through all the cars now. This is at the native resolution, and I switch, and I will let you know when I do. Okay, it's now at the upscale five times, which is 1080p upscaled. This can upscale up to 4K. That's insane. Uh, so you can see a lot of the detail on the car is clearly visible. Um, you will see some minor, I think that's glitching in the textures, but honestly, part of me wonders if that wasn't in there to begin with, and because of the blurriness, we never saw it. Yeah. I think you actually see that a lot more in one of the future games we play on this video. Man, it just looks so much better. And like Mr. Grimm's skull on the back of his jacket there, it's so much clearer now, and it just... It, it's like you're putting on a pair of glasses. You can actually see them. <laughs> Those missiles are flat. And I'm ashamed to admit, I didn't realize that was a snake head on her. I thought she just had the drawing of the snake on her car for the longest time. I didn't realize it popped up. I didn't either. I didn't notice it until we saw it. Just, I mean, what you pointed it out to me when we were looking at it. And in just in case the internet is wondering, yes, my eyesight stu sucks. I have a horrible astigmatism. Yes, I wear glasses. <laughs> Something else we do want to point out, all these games that we are playing on emulator, we own. Yes, so uh, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more in the setup, the importance of that. Um, yeah. Look at that taxi. So, that's, a, that's a big one. Yeah. Dark side. I used to play the garbage truck man in like the later games. Wait, was that the series? Or was that a different series? I think it was Vigilante 8 you were thinking of. I could right. be wrong. It's been so long since I played Twisted Metal. So here I'm trying to trying to switch between Dark Side. Dark Side was always mine and my brother's favorite character, just because he was so tanky. Him and Mr. Grimm, they're just so cool. Uh, so I went back to the X1 graphics. Ugh, 320 by 224. Oh. <laughs> um, which, of course, back then we thought it was great, right? Right. So, you watch when I pull over to this box here, and this really blew me away. So, see how fuzzy that text looks. Now, when I change it, bam. And the crowd, too, man. The crowd just looks... Looks like a crowd more than just blobs. And, I, and I'm really glad that Warthog decided to uh, really behave. He's kind of, like, left you alone. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh, he's doing benchmarking. <laughs> <laughs> My man's busy. But uh, on a side note, I don't remember this game being this hard because I suck at this game now. I cannot hit that guy. So I didn't even try to show gameplay footage of me attacking him because I, I couldn't hit him. I just ended up ramming him half the time. <laughs> but as a kid, I was always better at it. You had them. Young spry reflexes and I'm betting it was the CRT televisions and the zero input Latin. <laughs> Give me this internet. I need it now. The difference is just crazy. Uh, 
All right, now we're going to go over to another favorite of box, Resident Evil 2. Now, this one, it's got some good things. Uh, not the most impressive, but... Uh, so this is the dual shot version. Um, I like it because, hey, infinite ammo. And you can oh. notice a zombie got me from behind there. How do you let yourself get bit twice? Okay, With look, infinite I was ammo. benchmarking. I wasn't playing, okay? I was benchmarking. I'm sorry, that just sounds like excuses to me. Okay, so look, pay attention to his RPD. Okay, so see how clear that is now. There, I paused it because I was thinking about scaling it back. And you can also scale it in the middle of the game, which makes this very impressive. But uh, so we see the RPD there, and then I think I switch it again. Yes, I do. Oh, looks like KFC. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I'm Leon with the Colonel. <laughs> and you see his face doing some like weird jumping. That's actually in the game. If you look at the, the the blocky, not scaled version, he does the same thing. I think that's how they designed it to make him look like he's actually breathing. Yeah. So I think I think I think upscaling these textures have revealed a lot of dirty secrets. <laughs> Stuff you get away but, with when you don't, people don't have to see it. So you can see how good this looks. This is probably the best shot of Leon in the entire game. Um, so you can see pixelated RPD. And it just just looks good. Like I said, it just it's a it's a good way to kind of get a new take on the game. Who are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> Hold your fire! I'm, I'm a human. human. <laughs> <laughs> no textures in the world will get rid of that horrible. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that, babe. <laughs> I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I don't have a clue. <laughs> Hold on, let me lock you in here. By the time I noticed... <laughs> My question is, why wasn't the door locked to begin with? <laughs> All right, now we got another another cult classic, Armored Core. Um, you probably don't know this, but me and Mike, we are huge Armored Core fans. We used to all the time. We. Um, this game is just great. If you haven't played it play it just give it a shot um I, I think you can find the games fairly cheap now um but uh yeah they're really good games um aren't the armor core series is and you can see here the, how fuzzy the the edges of the mech are but when i upscale it it just smooths everything out and it just looks amazing it looks so good i couldn't imagine if it looked that way when we were kids Oh, I would imagine it blow my blow my mind, man. I don't think our TVs could have even handled it. <laughs> no, my my Sears four model TV I gamed on as a kid would blow up. It would just implode on itself. I had one of those TVs that was a floor model, you know, the TV that you put TVs on. Right. System engaged. We are monitoring your status. We'll contact you if the need arises. Nice. And I know what. <laughs> Well, thank you. As this is uh, your first job, make sure you proceed with care. That is all. Okay, thank you. Um, but, you know, somebody may look at this and be like, ah, that's not that great. Well, these games, you gotta understand when these games came out. Yes. They were way ahead of their time, but man, they were just... They were just so good. There's no way around it. But just look how it cleans up that floor texture. Watch that floor texture when I clean it up again. Oh. Now, one thing I do want to mention is this emulator is still fairly young, I believe. So, there are ROMs that it, well, bin files anyways, that may not run 100% with it. But in all the games that I tested in my collection, it's running good. You can see a little bit there with the, but I think that's something with the... It is. Uh, that's the emulator doing that. Okay. It's probably something with the emulator and the textures. Like I said, it's nothing major. I mean, it's not going to break your gameplay experience. 
Uh, you also notice there, look at, the, look at how good that plant looks. The vegetation just looks amazing. to the next game. This one was the one I was very impressed with. Uh, tell us a little bit about Parasite Eve, Mike. It's a survival horror game. There's lots of reading. And we're playing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Parasite Eve is uh, Square Enix's foray into the survival horror with a Square Enix. So it's Final Fantasy meets Resident Evil back when the survival horror genre was really blown. Um, and this game looks really good with the scale. So you can see how blurry her face is, and then bam! Can you see her face? Toes. Yes, you can even count the toes. And that's just... Pretty good. This game was pretty ambitious. I mean, a, a survival horror RPG that... From Square Was Squaresoft? Yeah, Squaresoft. Just yep. crazy to me. I mean, you had levels, you level up, you get new abilities, just like you would in a Final Fantasy. I mean, it's 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 actually really good. It's a lot of fun. Mm. But just like any old school Final Fantasy, lots of reading. And they okay. made two of them. And the second one is more like Resident Evil than Final Fantasy, but they're 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 both really good games. You should really try Parasite Eve if you get the chance. Um, it's it's definitely worth it. And because this game is story driven, I didn't want to drop the length of this video, so I just kind of ran around outside a bit. Um, because the intro of this game is pretty lengthy. That upscaling just looks so good. And mind you, this is only at 1080p. You got a 4K monitor, you can upscale at 4K. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about the install and setup. It's really simple. Um, so in the description below in the video, we're, we are going to have a link to this download page. Basically, you just click whichever one applies to you. You do have a Windows X64 uh, zip file. And then you at, for Android users, there is an APK that you can install. Uh, I don't know much about the Android version, though. So just going to download that. And I already extracted it to my folder here. I like to put on uh, just one location on my storage drive. There are two X two executables um i just sent the qt version to the desktop i don't know what the difference is between those and then i have my bios file and my game files now i do want to mention just a full disclosure we cannot tell you where to get these about you have to pull the bios from your own system you have to pull the games from your 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 own game disk I, we cannot tell you where to find these or how to get them um so there's all my games that I pulled from my collection, just for testing. Uh, I ended up never testing Nemesis, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, but um, I bet it would look really, really good, too. Oh, I bet Nemesis will look great. So uh, once you launch this, uh, you won't get that error message there. That was something that I got because I've been, I basically set it up and then tried to break it and to reset it up. And you go to the settings here. The settings are super simple. You go to the BIOS and... You're just going to navigate to your BIOS directory. Now, it's a little bit different than EPSXE because you select your BIOS file. This one, you just pick the folder. So I went to the BIOS folder, click Select Folder, and you can see where I got disoriented just a little bit there. And then I went to the drop-down list and selected my BIOS. You have to select that for all of them, right? Uh, I think you only have to do it for the green. I just picked it for all. Um, next, we have the game list settings. So you click uh, Add. And select your game folder. So I'll go back to my storage SSD. And I just put I like to put everything in my in, in my ROM folders under the same folder the emulator's in for safekeeping. Uh, so I did enable the option to do repeating scan. So that way as I add new games from my collection, it'll show up there. Uh, the controller settings is super easy. If you got an Xbox One controller or a DualShock 4, you just click Load Profile and then just select DualShock 4 or Xbox controller. You don't have to pick anything else. After you click it, it automatically maps your buttons. This is a huge time-saving step because a lot of times you have to individually map all your controls. Memory cards are developed by themselves, or excuse me, they're created. Um, the paths and everything. The... Uh, 
display settings, I picked Vulkan. Uh, but you can just leave it at default. Um, and then I force it to my graphics card because I have a laptop. But And in the enhancement settings, that's where you will actually go to change the internal resolution from X1 to X5. So once you have everything set up, uh, pretty much you just double click the game. Pretty simple. Pretty awesome, actually. I'm excited to play some of our uh, future Retro Survival Horror Month games or just some old games in general um, with this emulator because they're going to look so much better. Yeah, I'm very excited um, with the uh, development that this this continues on and uh, it's probably going to replace my favorite emulator for PlayStation games. All right. Well, that was a quick introduction video. Um, if, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, if there's any other games that you would like to see on the emulator that if me and Mike have it in our collection, we'll be more than happy to fire it up and show you what it looks like. Um, and if we don't until have next it, we'll time, eBay. <laughs> there is always eBay, except for some of these games. Now, be reasonable. Some of these games are like $900. <sighs> um, Somebody's going to be like, I want you to play this yet. game. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> But that is all the time we have for today's video. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know how we're doing. If you want to see more of our content, be sure to subscribe to our channel where we're always uploading new Let's Plays, new discussions, new little projects that me and Mike come up with because, you know, we get bored. Um, but as always, I'm your co-host, Conquer Corey. And I'm Mike. And we'll see, see ya. ya.